This is a fairly standard FP2 question on complex numbers. We have a de Marv's theorem part at the beginning, towards the end we find cube roots of a complex number and use an Argan diagram. Towards the end of part A, however, this section was a little unusual. First we're required to express cos 5 theta in terms of cos theta. So we can use de Marv's theorem to get that cos 5 theta plus j sine 5 theta is cos theta plus j sine theta to the power of 5. This will help us because then if we expand cos theta plus j sine theta to power 5 using binomial expansion, the real part will be an expression for cos 5 theta. To make the notation simpler, I like to write cos theta as c and sine theta as s. So first thing to do is to expand c plus j s to the power of 5. This is a binomial expansion. You might want to write out lines of working and collect terms together, but what you're going to need to include is the NCR values, or the fifth row of Pascal's triangles, so 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. You've got powers of, say, c descending from 5, so c to the fifth in the first term, then c to the fourth, c cubed, c squared, c, c to the power of 0, which is 1, and then js. Now you need to be careful, put the js in brackets, so for example when you've got js all squared or js all cubed, you will get the terms correct. And the powers of js are going from js to the power of 0, which is 1, so it doesn't look like it's here, through to the power of 5. So then, being very careful with those brackets, I would expand that. So for example, the term with js cubed, well, j cubed is minus j, because j squared is minus 1, and then it's multiplied by another j. So this term became negative with a single j. Similarly for all the other terms. So then we're ready to seek out the real parts of this expansion. So the real parts are all the parts which don't have any j's in them. So we don't worry about terms with a j, just the real terms. Okay. So we've now got an expression for cos 5 theta, but it's not just in terms of cos, we've got some sine theta terms in here as well. That's not a problem, because we can use the fact that sine squared plus cos squared is 1, or sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. So if we replace each sine squared with 1 minus cos squared, and of course sine to the fourth is sine squared squared, then we have our expression all in terms of cos theta. It's a good idea to take perhaps more lines of working than you think you need because the most common mistakes are when using negative values and brackets. So carefully multiplying this all out, we end up with an expression which is all in terms of cos and collecting like terms. So we've got cos theta to the power of 5 terms, cos theta cubed and cos theta terms. And then we should rewrite that. Remember, the notation was invented by us earlier in the question. We should go back to the full notation for the final answer. So this is our expression for cos of 5 theta. You might notice then the way that this is set out, lining up each term with an equal sign at the beginning of each line, where each line is equal to the line above, or if it's not equal to the line above, starting a new component of the logic like this. So this solution would gain full marks. Now we move on to part 2 of section A. The first part doesn't look too difficult. It's just involving an equation. Cos 5 theta equals 0. We've got an expression for cos 5 theta, and we're going to find values for cos squared theta. That shouldn't give too much trouble. However, the next part does look a little unusual, showing something for cos 18 degrees and a similar expression for sine 18 degrees. Maybe a sketch would help on this part of the question. So the first thing we want to do is to solve this equation. So we have cos 5 theta is 0. We can express cos 5 theta in the form that we came up with in part 1. So this will factorise taking a cos theta outside of the brackets, we're left with a quartic. Now we were told that cos theta is not zero, which means that the quartic must be equal to zero. And notice that this quartic, well we have c to the 4, which is c squared squared, and then we have c squared. 
So in fact the quartic is actually a quadratic in cos squared theta. So we can solve this quadratic, we could complete the square. When we have a coefficient of the squared term that's not 1, sometimes it's easier just to use the quadratic formula. Either method will be fine. So being very careful, it's often on these relatively easy basic skills where people make mistakes, we just need to substitute the values into the minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a formula and make sure that we get the correct result at the end. So taking care with that, we end up with an expression for cos squared theta, which is 5 eighths plus or minus root 5 over 8. So then we're on to the next part of the question involving cos at. OK, now apologies on this one. I have managed to make a bit of a mistake. That 72 there should actually be 54 degrees. So hopefully we'll remember that as we go through. OK, so on the sketch, what we did to make this sketch is to say that cos theta would usually be 0 at 90 degrees. So if we divide 90 by 5, it will first be 0 at 18 degrees. It would then usually be 0 at 270. 270 divided by 5 is 54 degrees. And then at the next value divided by 5, we end up with 90 degrees. So here's our first three values when cos 5 theta is 0. So this helps us because we can tell then that theta is either 18 degrees, 54 degrees, or 90 degrees. Now we were told that cos theta is not 0, so we know theta is not 90. So from the sketch, we've got two options. We've got cos of 18 degrees and cos of 54 degrees to be giving us these two values here. So the greater value, the one with the plus, must come from cos 18, and the smaller value, the one with the minus, must come from cos 54. So here I've written down what I was trying to explain there. So cos 18 squared would be the root with a positive square root, and cos of 54 squared is going to be the one with the negative root. And you need to justify this. So then all we have to do to get an expression for cos 18 is to square root the value found earlier when we use the plus, so we're using the positive root. So our final answer here would be that cos 18 is this. Now we were given that value, so we do have to fully justify why we've taken that. I think using a sketch is often an easy way to do this, as long as you fully describe why you've chosen those roots. Again, just note this isn't 72, apologies for that, that should be 54. Okay, we then need to find sine of 18, and we know that sine squared plus cos squared is 1, so here we've got cos squared of 18 degrees plus sine squared of 18 degrees is 1, so if we just rearrange that, then we get that sine of 18 degrees is the square root of 1 minus cos squared of 18, and we know that cos squared of 18 degrees is this expression previously found, so we just need to be careful, and 1 minus, we'll need to be careful again, subtracting here and using those brackets with the negative, to ensure that we end up with the correct final value, which is eventually the square root of 3 eighths minus root 5 over 8. Here we're asked to find the cube root of this number 4 root 3 plus 4j. The easiest way to do this is to write it in the e to the j theta form. So first of all we need to know it's modulus an argument. If we draw a sketch, you might realise that we've got here 4 and here's 4 root 3. That's just 4 times 1 and root 3, which gives us 4 times the 1, 2, root 3 triangle, known as the special angle triangle. So we'd get straight away that the hypotenuse is 8 and just know that this argument is pi by 6. If we don't spot that, of course, we can just use Pythagoras to square and add these values and then square root to get the modulus of 8 and we can do the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent to give us that the angle is pi by 6. So we've written our number as 8e to the j pi by 6, because the modulus is 8 and the argument is pi by 6. So to get the cube root of this number, we simply cube root the modulus and divide the argument by 3. Now, there'll also be a couple of other answers. We're expecting three cube roots. These cube roots are equally spread around a circle, so the distance between each root is 2 by 
2 pi by 3. So if we add on multiples of 2 pi by 3, we'll get the other values. So to get the new modulus, we cube root our 8. So our new modulus of our cube root value will be 2. And our angle will be a third of pi by 6, which is pi by 18. And we've also got pi by 18 plus 2 pi by 3 and pi by 18 plus 4 pi by 3. So we write out our final values and we should clearly state all three roots. So 2e to the j pi by 18, 2e to the j 13 pi by 18, and 2e to the j 25 pi by 18. Now sometimes we give principal arguments which would be between minus pi and pi, but in this question we were asked for the arguments to be between 0 and 2 pi. This is why I've given this one as this value rather than the negative angle. And finally, of course, you must use radians whenever you're working with complex numbers. And finally, we're given that we're going to look at some points P and Q. So P and Q are the roots with the smallest values of theta. So here it's essential that we wrote our roots in the correct way. Otherwise, we'd be using roots with the negative values of theta and we'd get the wrong point. So we're going to take the midpoint of P and Q, that will be the number W, we're going to find its argument and find the smallest integer n for which W to the n is a real number. Now there's only two marks here, so this should be a relatively straightforward thing to do. So finally we come to the last part. We might help ourselves by drawing a sketch. Even though we weren't asked to draw an argand diagram, it will probably help. It doesn't need to be done neatly. Um, it's just to help us out. This is only a two mark question after all. So the roots are going to be spread equally around a circle with a radius of 2 and P and Q are the two roots with the smallest arguments. M is the midpoint of P and Q. So to find that argument of M it's simply the average of the arguments of P and Q. So we can add up the two arguments and divide by 2. So we get that the argument of W is simply 7 pi by 18. Now that's less than pi by 2 and from a scale diagram we can see that that seems reasonable. Okay, finally then we want to find the smallest value of n for wn to be the real. So real numbers would be on the real axis. So theta could be 0 or pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or in fact any integer multiple of pi will keep us on the real axis. Now we can use the fact then that the argument of w to n is n multiplied by the argument of w because of the fact that when you multiply you add the arguments. So what we need is that 7 pi over 18 multiplied by n is going to be a multiple of pi. Here we see that the pi's cancel out. Now if that's an integer multiple we need k to be an integer so 7 eighteenths multiplied by n makes an integer. The smallest value of n that would make this true would be to put in n is 18, and then in fact we'd have 7 pi for our argument. That's the smallest value of n, where w to the n is a real number.